Good morning. Good morning. On this August long weekend, and you're here, and we have a cool day, thank goodness, comparatively. Wonderful to see you all here. Welcome, and welcome to all of you online who are gathering. Um, Tillman, I'm wondering if we can just drop the volume a bit. There's a bit of feedback on the mic there. Thank you. So, I just want to share a few announcements with you as we gather. Um, nothing too extensive on my part. Just a reminder that after today, I am away for the next three Sundays. Um, the first week, I'm going to be at my family funeral in the States, and then after that, I'll be back. Um, while I'm away, Karen Gusick, who many of you will know already, um, will be taking two of the services, and Lynn Mackey, Reverend Lynn Mackey will be back for a service as well, so you'll be well in hand. Um, and I'll see you again uh, the week of the 21st. I do want to share with you the sad news that I just received late yesterday that our uh, friend Olga Homeniak, or you will know her as Olga Hambling, passed um, just yesterday. And so we're just in the process of organizing things with her family so they can have a, a funeral here fairly soon. And uh, Ro Roxanne will let you know from the office about that. Uh, I don't have any other announcements myself, but I know that Corinne has an announcement for you. And so Corinne, come forward. morning. So those of you who know me know why I'm here because I'm going to talk about fundraising. So you will have noticed that uh, on the website right at the top of our website is a uh, let me see what we're calling this here. Uh, it's called Environment Friendly True Earth Products and that's our new fundraising initiative and it's very very easy to use so I brought a couple of things here to encourage you to give this a try so these are cleaning products all kinds of cleaning products laundry household cleaning products so this is what I've been using for years and I can't remember what this costs but I look for sales and this package which has some heft to it will do 57 loads of laundry and then there's plastic involved and I could not get a straight answer as to how much plastic is actually being recycled. I've heard 20%. I've heard from people none at all. So that's this. This is the True Earth Laundry product. This contains, it says, 32 loads of laundry. So this is what's left. So it comes in perforated sheets like this. You tear them in half this does a load if you cut that piece in half this does a small load two small loads so this will give you 64 small loads and this will cost a, a slightly less than twenty dollars and then you have this little bit of cardboard to recycle done and it does a good job Britt brought this to my attention. You've been using it for how long? Just, just briefly. Briefly, yeah. Joni's been using it for a while. Yes, and Joni's been using it. My daughter-in-law has been using the products. They're very happy with it. I'm happy with this product. Plus, it weighs nothing. This I have to lug into the house and recycle, and then lug it out to the curb again. So they have many other different cleaning products, and the best part of all for us is that we get 20% of everything that you purchase through the link that's set up on our website. So all you do is click on the button, follow the links, place your orders, and it will be delivered to your home at no additional cost. So it's practically effortless for us. And then on the 20th of every month, the commission that Salisbury United has made on this product will be sent to the church. So it's a no effort, no brainer, environmentally friendly, really good product. So I would encourage you to check that out on the website, place an order, see how you like it. And if you have any further questions for me, just uh, call me, email me, catch me at the end of the service, and I will be happy to do my best to answer them for you. Thank you.
let's uh, enter into worship. Let's uh, sing a medley of songs as we usually do. We're going to sing O Great Spirit. This is a, a song that was, um, that's in our hymn book by permission of one of the um, uh, Indigenous First Nations on the West Coast. And I just thought for this service we would open with it. And then uh, where two or three are gathered, and then we'll stand and sing Praise the Lord with the sound of trumpet.
music folks will just stay at the front, our Salisbury singers, for the call to prayer. And so we'll say the words of the call to prayer together and you respond in the bold yellow text. In the best and worst of times, we join together in worship. From deep within, we sense the need to offer up both our praise and our burdens as we gather. Despite the circumstances we face, God's desire is to be rich toward all Earth's children. So we come into the sanctuary of God's presence, open to God's wisdom and alive to the riches God seeks to pour into our hearts. Let us worship God. Our singers may be seated and we will light the Christ candle. Let us proclaim the presence of the light of Christ together. The light of Christ is with us, between us, and all around us. Thanks be to God. We also share in the passing of the peace. And we do this because although our world is not at peace and our lives may also not be at peace, we know that peace, especially the peace that passes understanding, is part of God's path for us in life. And so I invite you to stand. And we pass the peace with an energy that we extend to each other. We place our hands over our hearts. And just because we have folks online, I invite you to turn to the back. And that back TV above there is, is our, our access point to all those who are here in spirit but not in body so we say to you online peace be with you and we invite you to lean toward us in peace this day and then if you would please turn to each other across the aisle acknowledge each other know that you're extending peace and then turn to everyone around you extend yourselves in peace to each other peace Lucien peace Tillman and then uh, turn to the front, and I will say to you, may the peace of Christ be with you all. Amen, and please be seated. We're going to sing the hymn, Never Ending Joy. Never Ending Joy, Never Ending Joy, Never Ending Joy. The chorus repeats, and the verse says, God of every tribe, every language. God of every river and sea, God of every mountain and island, you bring joy to me. Let us sing.
And now let us uh, pray the opening prayer, and it is also responsive as well. And at the end, uh, when we come to the Lord's Prayer, uh, I ask you to say that with me. Let us pray. Creator of all worlds, we lift up our souls to you. All the earth is yours. All who dwell here are your children. We seek once more to experience your truth, to receive your blessing, to ascend above the limitations we have known. You are strong in love and mighty in compassion beyond our imagining. Help us to become more than we have believed ourselves to be, individually and together. This we pray through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So it's uh, discovery time, and uh, the summer discovery time, in lieu of a sit at the front with uh, little people that aren't here, I thought I'd share with you just some of the readings that we have been working through in my Doctor of Ministry program. And each week I've introduced you to a different poet that has had some influence on the language and life of the church and of, of people of faith and of people of no faith. And today I want to introduce you to E.E. E. Cummings. How many of you have heard of E.E. E. Cummings? So, well known by name, his, his, the E.E. E. stands for Edward Estlin, Edward Estlin Cummings. He died in 1962, so he's a fairly recent poet. He was the son of a Unitarian minister uh, who became one of the most famous recent poets in English, although his, he spent most of his time as an artist painting, actually but it's his poetry he's become famous for. And he was particularly um, uh, picked up by young people, by younger generations. Um, and part of the reason for that is because he was pretty unconventional. You may remember he doesn't capitalize anything in his poems, so he broke that convention alone, but he broke many other conventions. He always... Um, wrote, um, I sometimes think he was anticipating email addresses the way he wrote in lowercase, but he also um, put together words in strange new ways that people who liked conventional rhyming and conventional poetry often found hard to follow. He would refer to God simply as the yes, the great yes at the heart of life. And he viewed God more as imaginative and joyous as an affirmer of life, not as a judge and a punisher. And um, he was very inventive. And his language reminds us of how important it is that the life of faith and the language of faith be constantly changing, being inventive, imaginative, creative, and breaking the barriers of convention. So I am going to read a poem of his. It's one that isn't heard as much by him. It's called, I Am a Little church. I am a little church, and here it is. I am a little church, no great cathedral, far from the splendor and squalor of hurrying cities. I do not worry if briefer days go briefest. There's one of his, what does that mean, briefer days go briefest, and yet you understand what he means. I am not sorry when sun and rain make April. I'm not sorry when sun and rain make April. My life is the life of the reaper and the sower. My prayers are prayers 
of Earth's own clumsily striving, finding and losing, and laughing and crying, children whose only sadness or joy is my grief or my gladness. Around me surges a miracle of unceasing birth and glory and death and resurrection. Over my sleeping self float flaming symbols of hope, and I wake to a perfect patience of mountains. That's a great phrase, a perfect patience of mountains. I am a little church, far from the frantic world with its rapture and anguish, at peace with nature. I do not worry if longer nights grow longest. I am not sorry when silence becomes singing. Winter by spring, I lift my diminutive spire to merciful him whose only now is forever. Standing erect in the deathless truth of his presence, welcoming humbly his light and proudly his darkness. Let us pray. And I'll just say the words. Loving God, God of life and joy, God of words inexpressible and yet understood, God of change in every season and yet God of the continuity of love. We thank you for words that are bold, that are changing, that help us to live our faith in lively and new ways. In this great time of transition and turmoil in the world, Help us to strive for a lively faith that is full of love as you are. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to uh, sing an introduction to our scripture readings, and Rose will be our scripture reading this morning. We're going to sing, The Kingdom of God is Justice and Peace and Joy in the Holy Spirit. First scripture reading is from Luke 12, verses 13 to 21. When Jesus was telling the crowds of the coming persecution of his followers and their need to trust in God, a man in the crowd cried out to Jesus, Master, tell my brother to divide our inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Listen, man, who made me a judge 
or the arbitrator of your claim. Jesus then went on, be careful, be on guard against the greed that is never content. A person's life does not get its security from what a person owns, even if there is an overabundance. Jesus then told them this parable. A rich man's land gave a fantastic harvest. He wondered to himself, what shall I do? I have nowhere to store this great harvest. Then he said, I know what I'll do. I'll pull down my barns and build even bigger ones to store all harvest and goods in them. Then I'll say to myself, man, you've got it made. All that stuff, take it easy, eat, drink, and have a good time. But God said to him, you idiot, this night your soul will be demanded. All this wealth of yours, whose then will it be? It will be just like that for the person who amasses treasure for him or herself and is not rich towards God. We'll now sing the hymn. Our, o God, our help in ages past. May God grant our understanding of these words. Our second scripture is from Psalms 89, verses 3 to 6, 12 to 14, and 17. Eternal and immortal one, you have been our refuge in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, before you had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are the Alpha and the Omega. When our days on earth are ended, you welcome us home to your heart, to the city of light, where time is eternal and days are not numbered. You gather those who love you as friends returning from a long journey, giving rest to their souls. You anoint, anoint them with the balm of understanding, 
healing wounds of the past. For our days on earth are a mystery, a searching for you, a yearning for the great mystery to make itself known. The years pass and soon the harvest is at hand, a time to reap the fruit of one's life. Who has lived with integrity? Who will reflect the light? Who can bear the radiant beams of love? Who have reverenced the counselor and opened their hearts to the spirit of truth? Teach us, O oh beloved, to honor each day that we may have a heart of wisdom. These readings you have heard contain the wisdom of God. Let us open our ears and reflect on what the word is saying to us today. So when we were singing that first hymn, uh, oh, oh, oh God, our help in ages past, you may have picked up on the typo in that. And Rose and I turned to each other and said, it's, it's our stormy blast, not our story, my blast. Which lets you know that that's a hymn we've sung many times for us to know that without having to look it up. So how many of you ever heard the phrase, don't be that guy? Right. You have. It's actually fairly recent as an addition to our everyday English language. When someone is being that guy, it means that they are being self-centered and incredibly tone-deaf to nuances in relationships. In Scotland, it's, it went even further than being used that way, and it actually became part of a very famous police campaign against dating and relationship abuse. Um, and it, uh, it, it's been on the internet for some time, that police campaign, um, uh, particularly relationship, relationship abuse between men and women. But that's not the context I'm referring to it in, if you have seen that campaign. I'm sticking to that, that broader meaning um, of being that guy, meaning somebody who's self-centered and maybe tone deaf to nuances. And it's not just about guys. It's also about all kinds of people. And I would like to introduce you to that guy today, that barn guy in our reading. He's the guy in the scripture reading who is so focused on himself, on his own net worth and how to control everything that he possesses and how to secure it and lock it down at all costs that he misses the not so subtle spiritual nuances of about his relationship with his own soul and with God. And so that's why I'm calling him Barn Guy. And as Barn Guy, he will, of course, count his chickens frequently after they're hatched. And he'll count them multiple times. And as we have heard in the story, he'll build not just the original barns, he won't use those, he'll build extra big barns, not just for his harvest, but for his all his possessions, although it might be multi-door garages, it might be a new workshop for all the equipment, it might be a huge hidden account in the Cayman Islands where everything can be socked away safely. This person shores up their collection of material wealth and acquisitions to preserve them and safeguard them, and then says to themselves, self, you've got it made. Of course, taking care of the things in your life is important. Recognizing that your material things are, are serving purposes in your life and treating them with care so that you can continue to use them and enjoy them for a good long time is, is part of what we are supposed to do in our life. But this guy, this barn guy, goes much further than most people do in doing that. He goes to the degree with his possessions that what he owns 
and who he is are virtually one and the same. So his material wealth and him, his sense of self are virtually one and the same. In the story that Jesus tells as he's doing this, life still goes on. Even though he's locked down all his possessions, life doesn't stop. And so at some point, his time comes. In the more traditional versions of this, as Jesus tells it, Jesus says, your life is demanded of you. In this translation, it's your soul is demanded of you. And at that point, the question arises, what then will all that acquisition and safeguarding do for you if you have, in the process, failed to live your life in a way where you give love away in the world? If you have failed, in other words, to be rich toward God. And I think in this passage, what Jesus means is when you fail to be rich in love in the world. Jesus says, look at barn guy and don't be that guy. Because your life might well be demanded of you this very day. You never know. And in the end, the only thing you will get to take with you are the riches that you have stored up toward God in your life. Now I want to pause here and say that when we're talking about being rich toward God, this isn't a bid to uh, ask people to spend huge amounts of money on the church or on the buildings of the church. I think often in a faith history we have confused being rich with God by creating edifices and spending lavish amounts of money on material things that have religious purposes. I can remember in Prague going to um, one of the big um, um, museums there of religious artifacts. One of the most amazing artifacts I've ever seen uh, had, um, it was a, a, a symbol that would, would be held up at the time of the Eucharist in what is now the Roman Catholic Church, but at the time that this was made, it was the only church. And every ray on the end of this monstrance, they called it, was tipped with a diamond. And there must have been several dozen diamonds, and the whole thing glowed. I've never seen anything like it. But that object doesn't mean that the maker who made it was actually rich toward God in his life. I'm assuming it was a hymn at that time. That's part of what we have, made, we have thought of being rich toward God as. We have also thought of being rich toward God as going out and missionizing. I'm using that word. That's an E.E. E. Cummings thing. You, you make a word that doesn't exist out of another word. So uh, you missionize the world as a sign that you're rich toward God. But that doesn't mean that as you're in the world, you're actually doing the decent thing while you're representing the, the church. Being rich toward God is not about giving money to the church or even going out and bringing uh, some religious message to people and trying to get people uh, to be, be in your faith. It's not about building up empires or institutions. That's not what being rich toward God is. Being rich toward God is about being rich in soul. It's about being rich in soul being rich in compassion, being rich in right action and living. It's not about being perfect. Nobody can be, and, and I think I've said before, perfect people are terrible to live with because you can't live with a perfect person. They'll drive you crazy. But you can be rich in your soul and in your life in the way that you live. That's why I have referred in the past and why we spent a whole year looking at the seven sacred teachings of indigenous teaching, which are also almost parallel to the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit in um, our Christian tradition. And you may remember some of them. There's wisdom and love, humility, respect, honesty, courage, and truth. And to live a life which does at least one or two of those well is to live a life that is rich toward God. Those are riches you can build a life on. Those are riches that you can give away any time and never diminish. 
If you give away love, you will never have less love. In fact, you give love away because you have enough and more than enough to share with others. Your life then becomes the storehouse of these riches. And the community becomes the storehouse of those riches. And those riches become a living testament to who you are in your soul and who God is, the God who we all believe in. And in the end, your life will never be diminished if you trust in those gifts. Our psalm says, our days on earth are a mystery. The years pass and soon the harvest is at hand. Who has lived with integrity? Who has opened their hearts to the spirit of truth? Teach us to honor each day that we may have a heart of wisdom. That we may have a heart of wisdom. From God's heart to ours, there flows this rich abundance, which is our true treasure. It's the one that will sustain us as we wind our way through time until we reach the shores of eternity and we pass with our last breath into God's great ocean of love. And so I would like to close this short reflection with a prayer that comes from uh, the St. Louis Center for Liturgy in the United States, and I sometimes turn uh, to what they write. And this is the prayer. Lord, between our first breath and our last, before you call us home, you give us time. Time to work hard, time to pray well, time to play, time to give, time to be with friends, time to love and be loved. When our hours are spent, please let us hear you say, I was here with you through it all. I gave you precious time, and you have used it. You have used it well, beloved. You have used it well. And so may it be for us, and may we not be that guy as often as we can manage it. Amen. Our next song is going to be for the fruit of all creation. Thanks be to God.
So I just want to pause and uh, recognize. I have the mic on. Oh, my headset's on. I can't hear the feedback from up here. Thank you, Tillman. I want to pause and recognize uh, the offerings. Um, thank you for supporting each other and um, different groups and organizations in our community in the many ways that I know you all do. I want to thank you for supporting the life and work of this church. I want to thank Corinne for having kind of fallen into our fundraising champion role. I don't know if you were pressed into it or we just assumed you would do it, but you fell into it. Yes. Um, I do want to then just remind you again, as Corinne announced, we have a new fundraiser we have started where we get to keep 20% of the proceeds, and it's for these environmentally friendly uh, laundry and cleaning products. And the link to try that out uh, is um, on our website. That's how you access it. And if you're doubtful, when I get back, um, Corinne and I will arrange to have some samples of mobile. If you'd like to try it before you order, we'll, we'll get that to happen. So. so thank you for your giving and your receiving. And I just want to offer a prayer here in recognition of all offerings. Uh, if you're here today, you can leave your offering in the offering plate as you, at the end of the service, just outside the door. Uh, if you're online, you can always, and, and at any time, you can make an uh, e-transfer or go to our website to the offering link there and make an offering that way or, or get a check uh, to the church. And so, let us pray the offering prayer for today. We offer not only our gifts, compassionate God, but our time so we might spend more moments with the lonely, our words so that the voiceless might be healed, our hands so that the hungry might be fed, our hearts so that the rejected might find a home. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now we turn to our closing prayers for this service. Um, we, of course, are offering our prayers for uh, Olga's family. We offer our prayers for all those who are traveling at this time, all those who can't be here for whatever reason, and all those who are awaiting medical services or treatments. We keep all of those in mind as we uh, turn in this prayer there is a place to pause in silence for you to name those places and people that are in your hearts this morning. Allow me to pray the words while you join me in your hearts. God of love and mercy, you call us and all the creatures of earth into one living family. By your gracious presence, we are able to look with new eyes at the whole human family in its brokenness and pain. We seek your strength and determination to embrace all living things and to live your great good news of hope and new life. Hear us as we lift to you our deepest needs, our pressing burdens, our fears and hopes, be near us, we pray, as your people. Help us to receive your many gifts with gratitude and faithful stewardship. We pray for those who suffer pain or illness. We pray for the lonely and despairing, for the lost and worn and battered of our world. And we lift to you the leaders of this and every nation, of every community and faith community, that they would be guided by your spirit and aware of needs, especially of the least of their people. We pray for those whose lives are closely linked to our own, and we name them in silence in our hearts now as we hold them in our thoughts and our memories.
Holy God, we also pray for our own needs, which we offer to you in faith. And uh, we pause again in silence to name a personal need we might have this day that we invite you to hear and bear with us. And so we continue. To the sick, O Lord, give your healing. To the grieving, give hope. To the dying, give your peace. And to all of us, O God, give faith to go forth from this place, determined to live in the light of your good news in Jesus, who is the Christ. It is in his name that we offer to you our prayers, our hopes, our brokenness, and our total lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we come to the time when we say goodbye to the Christ light. Let us go now, knowing that the light of Christ can never really be put out. The light always goes with us into the world and as we extinguish this candle it simply changes form and becomes a blessing that drifts like smoke toward all the four directions of creation the smoke rises like a blessing until we meet again and can put a flame to the candle wick declaring that the light of christ is with us, between us, and all around us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our final hymn will be Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, and I'd ask our singers to come forward again.
And I'm going to invite our singers to just put your hand on the shoulder of the person next to you. Is that okay? I know I'm going to stay right here. May the one we serve bless you and keep you. May the one who governs us show you a shining smile. For you are good in the maker's sight. You are loved by God. May the one who rules by love alone grant you peace. Amen. Worship is over. Our lives, our service to others continues. For those of you on YouTube, uh, this is the end of the service. For those of you on Zoom, please linger a bit and greet each other and the rest of us, of course, those who are here in the pews. Let's take time uh, to check in with each other. Have a blessed week, and uh, I'll see you in a couple weeks, but don't go away because there will be services here while I'm away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you.